गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास इन प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द फर्स्ट कम फर्स्ट सर्व सीपीयू शेड्यूलिंग नाउ टुडेस टॉपिक इज राउंड रोबिन सीपीयू शेड्यूलिंग सो लेट्स सी व्हाट इज राउंड रोबिन शेड्यूलिंग Uh, each process gets a small unit of CPU time. This is called time quantum. You may think of a time quantum uh, just like uh, as a time slot, uh, as we have time slots in Viva in examination. This is just like that time quantum. After your time quantum expire, uh, another person in the queue will be having the privilege to go into the ex uh, examination room or into the uh viva chamber right so this time quantum you can think of as a time slot so each process get a small unit of cpu time which is called time quantum or you can say time slot usually 10 to 100 milliseconds or here you can have a unit of time or you can say unit time or whatever the unit time uh, you are using for the cpu so each process get a small unit of cpu time that is time quantum or time slot usually 10 to 100 of unit time after this time has elapsed the process is preempted preempted means that process has to uh, pause or send to the end of the ready queue and the rest of the processing will be done once all other members of the ready queue will have a fair chance to get to the cpu for execution so this round robin scheduling is something like that uh, suppose there are three person in a queue one two three and uh, here first person is having the cpu for processing once a time slot expire it will turn back and will send to the end of the ready queue and the next uh, process in the queue will have the chance to go to the cpu and once time slot has expired it will again come back to the queue uh, uh, in the end of the ready queue so this is how round uh, robin uh, round robin scheduling works and uh, suppose time quantum or time slot you have given is too large then this round robin scheduling work as a cfs uh, this is a very common sense thing that uh, uh, if your time quantum is as large as uh, like uh, having the more than the bus time of each process and it will work as first come first serve scheduling because here you can see in round robin also of, a uh, process which comes first in the queue will have the chance to go to the cpu but it will have a uh, time slot for execution and after that the next in the queue will get the chance to go to the cpu and here is also a performance issue in case queue must be large with respect to context switch what is the queue here we are referring to uh, queue is the time of time quantum here time quantum is referred as q so if time quantum or time slot is large with respect to the context switch uh, then overhead is too high what is the context switch we have studied in previous classes that context switch is the time spent by the hardware to switch from one process to another process and there is a dispatcher you have studied this what is the job of a dispatcher dispatcher pick up uh, old uh, uh, and stop a process and then start a new process so this is the job of a dispatcher and here if time quantum queue is uh, queue must be large with respect to the context switch otherwise performance issue will be there so let's have a question on this here we have a process and the bus time p1 53 p2 17 p3 68 and p4 24 suppose that the process is arrive at time 0 in the order p1 p2 p3 and p4 and here we are having a time quantum of 20 unit of time and we have to again find out all these four things okay so we are having this question we are having four processes along with the bus time and we are provided the time quantum please everyone having a pen and paper with you and uh, please start with me as i am solving this question uh, you have to write side by side so that you can understand properly how to solve round robin questions in a proper manner so firstly we have to draw the gantt chart without uh, designing the gantt chart we cannot proceed further in a proper manner so let's see uh here is we are having process and the bus time now what we have to do we have to give the 20 unit time chunk to p1 firstly 20 time unit time is given then 53 minus 20 that is 33 remaining time of p1 will be there then we will go to 
P2 and give the 20 unit time to this 17. Now, uh, as you can see that bus time is 17 only and time quantum is 20, right? So it will have execution in the first turn in itself. Then we have P3, 68. If we give time, 20 time unit, then what will happen? 48 will be remaining. 48 bus time will be remaining. Then in the last P4, if 20 time unit has been given to this 24, then four unit time will be there. So let's see. Here is a table, a step by step process. Here you can see that in starting 53, 17, 68, 24 is there. In 53, when you are given 20 time unit, what is the remaining time? That is 33. And when you given 20 unit time to this 17 bus time, as you see that bus time is less than the time quantum, then it will be uh, finished in one slot only. Then 68 minus 20, that is 48. 24 minus 20, that is 4. So after that, another 20 time slot will be given to this P1. Then 33 minus 20, that is 13. Then 0 is 0 because P2 has exited from the ready queue. Then 48 minus 20, that is 28. And 4, 0. And in the next turn, only P1 and P3 will be in the ready queue. So in next turn, 13 is less than 20. So bus time will be 0 for P1 and P2. And for P3, 8 will bus time will be remaining. And in the last turn, uh, everything will be 0. So this is how we can draw the Gantt chart. Let's see. Uh, in the first turn, we are having 53. My, the, then 20 time slot is given to P1. Here you can see 0 to 20 unit time is given to P1. Then 20 unit time has to be given to 17, but 17 is less than 20. So only 17 unit time in the next uh, process will be used. Then 20 plus 17 is 37. Then we have P3, 68. 20 time slot is given to 68, 37 to 57. Then there is a P4, 20 time slot is given. Then we are having 57 to 77. Now, as you can see that P2 has finished its execution and we are left with P1, P3 and P4 only. So for P1, again, 33 bus time has been remaining. So 20 time slot has been given to P1, 77 to 97 unit time we are reached. Now P2 has eliminated. Now the next turn is of what? P3. P3 is having 48 bus time. We have given 20 to this P3. So 97 to 117, and then four unit time has been remaining for P4. So only four unit time has been given here. 117 plus four, that is 121. Now we can see that only P1 and P3 are there in the ready queue. P2 and P4 has been exited as their execution has been finished. So 13 unit time will be given to P1 once again, 121 to 134. And then the chance of T28, that is P3 will come 20 time slot in first session will be given and then remaining eight unit will be given to this P3. Uh, so uh, everyone are very clear about how to draw this Gantt chart of round robin. Please write in the chat box yes or no so that I can understand that we are on the same page or not. Please write in the chat box. Do you understand the process how to draw the Gantt chart of this round robin? Firoz is saying no sir. Anyone else? No, Ananya is saying yes. No, no, no is very there. Okay, I am repeating once again. Uh, let's see, this is a very simple process that just like in FCFS time scheduling, what happened in FCFS? Which process come first will be given the CPU execution firstly. Suppose in the case of, if it is a case of FCFS, then what will happen? Suppose if uh, I am going backward, uh, you are having pen and paper with you. Uh, suppose this is a question yes, of FCFS. Now solve this question for FCFS only. Solve this question for FCFS and give me the answer. Solve this question for FCFS. Forget about round robin. Solve this question for FCFS and let me know your findings. What is the average waiting time? Just find the average waiting time then I will explain how to go for round robin. Give me the average waiting time for this question for FCFS scheduling. FCFS scheduling.
solve this question for FCFS. So for P1, time zero is started and P1 is having 57 time slot, right? Then 57 plus 17 is what? Seventy four, right? And then seventy four plus sixty eight is what? Prakar is with the answer sixty point two five. And then what is one forty two to twenty four? Uh oh. Okay, so this is how you have calculated, right? Zero to, sorry, sorry, from where 57 comes, this is 53, no? And there is some issue. Zero to 53, then 17 we are having, then plus the 17. You have 70, then we have a 13, and then 24. Okay, so let's see waiting time for P1, this is zero. For P2, this is 53. For P3, this is 70. And for P4, this is what? 138. Now, what is average waiting time? Average waiting time will be there. Uh, zero plus 53 plus 70 plus 138 and divide by what four so let's see what is the answer zero plus 53 plus 70 plus 138 and divide by how much four so we are having 65.25 uh, where how you have calculated 69.25 and 60.25 the answer is 65.25 okay so those who are having the answer 60.25 or something else please cross check your gantt chart and the processing so this is how we are done with the fcfs right 0 to 53 time slot will be given for p1 then 17 time slot given to p2 53 plus 17 is what 70 and then we are having 68 for p3 add the 70 68 time to 70 then we are having 138 and then at 24 we are having 162 so now in this case you are saying that p1 is given whole time slot of 53 unit time and p2 is given whole time slot of 17 and p3 70 and in case of p4 we are having 138 but what happened in round robin we have given only 20 time slot to P1. This P1 will be given in initially 20 time slot only. Initially, a P1 will be given only 20 time slot. Then what is the remaining time slot of this P3? Then what is the remaining time slot of P3? Remaining time slot of P3 is what? As you can see here, 33 is the remaining time slot of P1. Uh, sorry, uh, 33 is the remaining uh, time slot of P1 means it has to execute once again. So what will happen in a round robin? In a round robin, I'm sh showing you how it is going to work. Let me remove this. So initially, 0 to 20 given to what? P1, right? And then P2 will be given 17 slot to so 20 plus 17 is 37 right so here you can see that what i am drawing right now that i have already drawn what happened see here in below that p1 0 to 20 time slot has given then p2 17 20 to 37 and then p3 what 57 right and then p4 we are having how much 77 then what will happen 
P1 given its chance to go to CPU, P2 has the chance, P3 and P4. Now, uh, once P1 is exited from the CPU, it will go back to the ready queue. That is, in the end, P1 will come once again. Understand? P1 has completed its execution. It will go back to in the end of the ready queue. Now again, P1 will be given 20 time slot and so on. So this is how this round robin is working. That firstly P1, then P2, P3, P4. Then what is if there is a remaining time for P1? As we can see here, that 33 bus time is remaining. So P1 will be given again the CPU. So P1 is executing here. And after 20 time slot has expired, it has to go again to the ready queue. And who will get the CPU? This next one, P3, because P2 has finished its execution. This is not anymore in the ready queue. So 48, in this case, having the bus time of P3, that is the remaining. So P3 will be given the time slot after the P1. And here P1 is uh, removed and go to the ready queue. Now once P3 has completed, it has again go to the ready queue. And then we can have this P4, four bus time has remaining. So again, P4 is coming. Here you can see that this is just like a FCFS. P1, P2, P3, P4, then P1, P3, P4. Why P1, P3, P4? Because P2 has finished its execution. Now in the last turn, here you can see that P2 and P4 has finished execution. So who are the process remaining in the ready queue? They are P1 and P3 only, understand? So this is how it works. Now everyone is on the same page. Did you get the crux of this round robin that uh, simply there are, uh, suppose four students are there. Uh, you have given uh, 20 seconds to go to drink the water. You go there in 20 seconds, you drink the water and again come back and uh, stand at the end of the ready queue. Then second student go to drink the water, it drink 20 seconds and come back to the end of the ready queue. This is how we are working that uh, there are four person are there. First go for 20 seconds, drink the water and come back to the end of the ready queue. Then second one go to the drink the water and then go and stand in the end of the ready queue. Then and third, go to the drink the water and come stand in the end of the ready queue. Similarly, uh, this process goes on and on until and unless everyone's uh, uh, is uh, uh, like satisfied with the water they are having, right? So now you are understand with the round robin, yes or no? Please write in the chat box. Do you understand? Those who have not understand previously, do you understand now? Did you got the reasoning? Okay. Okay, so let's start to calculate the waiting time, average waiting time, turnaround time, and the average turnaround time. So let's see uh, how to calculate these things. Uh, as we are having here, the process and the bus time, and this is the Gantt chart through which we are going to calculate the waiting time. What is the waiting time? Waiting time is the time a process waits in the ready queue for its turn to go to the CPU. So let's see, uh, tell me how much, what is the waiting time for P1? Can anyone tell me what is the waiting time of P1 and how you uh, find out that what, this is the waiting time for P1? Can you tell me what 20. is the waiting time? 20. Uh, how did you calculate it, 20? Because you can see here P1 firstly given the CPU so at zero. And then again, P1 has given the chance to go to the CPU only at 77 unit time. And then there is all, again a break till P3 and P4 are executing in the CPU. P1 is wait, uh, taking the rest in the ready queue only, right? So till this time, P3 and P4 are running in the CPU. P1 is waiting in the ready queue. And when it gets the CPU once again, it will get the CPU on 121. So you have to calculate all these differences like when P3 is executing, P1 is there in the ready queue. When P4 is executing, P1 is still in the ready queue, right? And here also, when P1 finishes execution at 20, then P2 goes in the CPU. P1 is waiting in the ready queue. P3 is executing in the CPU. P1 is waiting in the ready queue. P4 is executing in the CPU. Still, P1 is waiting in the ready queue. When it gets the CPU at 77 unit time. Did you get the concept? Now tell me what is the waiting time for P1? You have to calculate so 121. 121. Uh, this is the total time you are thinking of that here 121 P1 get the chance. So you have to partially find the time that how much time it has to wait in the ready queue. Let's see how to calculate. 
for first turn p1 is getting the cpu is at zero unit time at it arrives at zero so the waiting time is zero now what is the next turn of p1 at 77 unit time and where it leaves the cpu it leaves the cpu at 20 unit time so the difference 77 minus 20 that is 57 unit time till this p2 p3 and p4 are executing in the cpu it is waiting into the ready queue right because it has exited from the cpu and has to wait at the end of the queue till p2 and p3 p4 are executing so 77 minus 20 that is 57 unit time this is the difference between the second turn of p1 and the p1 as is saying bus time minus arrival time this is not true directly for the round robin because you have to calculate here that how much uh, the time difference between the turns of the processes so please properly understand what i am telling you and this is the very simplest method now what is the next turn of p1 we are having we are having the next turn is p1 is here at the 121 unit time and when it leaves the cpu it leaves the cpu at 97 unit time <clears throat> so 121 minus 97 that is 24 unit time it has to wait so the total waiting time in the wait ready queue is what zero plus 57 plus 24 that is 81 unit time now did you get the concept yes or no how to calculate the waiting time in the case of round robin please tell me yes or no okay so now tell me what is the waiting time for p2 very simple because p2 is only at one time only in the gan chart what is the waiting time for p2 this is 20 only right waiting time for p2 is what waiting time for p2 is what 20 only because when p2, p2 get the cpu control at the 20 unit time only now tell me what is the waiting time for p3 p3 is uh, how many times p3 is here p3 is here p3 is here and p3 is here tell me the waiting time for p3 calculate the waiting time for p3 waiting time for p3 firstly p3 uh, gets the cpu control at 37 then it leaves on 57 then it again get the control at 97 then leaves on 117 then again it get the control at 134 and then goes on one answer has pop up that is 114 by ayush anyone else anyone just a minus operation you have to do here that is 37 plus 97 minus 57 then plus 134 minus 117 that's it rajiv is with different answer that is 94 uh, aparna is also saying 94 uh, 94 94 bhai ayush you are having 114 everyone is saying 94 let's see uh, yes we are having 94 as you can see here for p3 first time you get the cpu at 37 only and then next turn was here at 97 unit time so 97 what is the difference between 97 and 57 that is 40 and then is the next turn is 134 then 134 you get the cpu and then goes on because there was no other process remaining in the ready queue then 134 and when it leaves the cpu it leaves the cpu at 117 so this is the difference of 17 so total waiting time in the ready queue is 37 40 17 that is 94 <clears throat> what about p4 what about p4 last one p4 is at two times p4 is here and p4 is here it comes in the cpu at 57 leaves at 74 and then again get the control at 117 uh, answer is 97 by aparna ayush and krishna let's see yes the answer is 97 57 you get the first time and then the next turn is 117 and when it leaves at 77 so 57 plus 40 that is 97 as you can see here that we are simply doing addition and subtraction of operation only but how you are applying this addition and subtraction operation this is called the application in of you are using of addition and subtraction with the different concept so this is the new thing you are learning but on the basis of your previous knowledge that you have already with you otherwise i have to make you learn how to do addition operation and how to do subtraction operation so everything you are learning uh, it depends upon your past learning so 
let's see everyone is done with the waiting time of p1 that is 81 p2 20 p3 94 and p4 is 97 so what is the average waiting time very simple operation you have to sum all these uh, processes individual waiting time and divide by the number of processes so what is there 81 plus 20 plus 94 plus 97 that is 292 and then we are having 73 okay so we are done with waiting time and average waiting time let's see go and check out the turnaround time here we have a gantt chart and then process and the burst time what is the turnaround time turnaround time is what completion time minus arrival time what is the completion time of p1 p1 has completed its execution at 134 and when it was arrives it arrives at time zero so what is the turnaround time for one p1 is 134 now tell me what is the turn turnaround time for p2 please tell me the answer of p2 what is the turnaround time for p2 very simple because p2 is there for only one time yes of course this is 37 and then what is about p3 what is the turnaround time for p3 here you can see that p3 has finished its execution at 162 and what is the arrival time for p3 is 0 so 162 minus 0 that is 162 now tell me the last one turnaround time for p4 you don't need pen and paper for this turnaround time right you have directly solved this tell me what is the turnaround time for p4 121 absolutely because at 121 only p4 has finished its execution and the arrival time is what zero so 121 minus zero the answer is 121 very good shweta priyam aparna adarsh uh, you have correctly answered that p4 turnaround time will be the 121 because at 121 p4 has finished its execution and as per the question that all these processes comes arrives at zero so the arrival time is zero so this is how we are getting the turnaround time now uh, what is the average turnaround time can you do the sum 134 plus 37 162 plus 121 can you do the sum for me 134 plus 37 plus 162 plus 121. Uh, Prikhar is saying the answer is 1. So let's see. I don't think that the answer is 1. We are having 134 plus 37 plus 162 plus 121. That is 454. Uh, Prikhar is saying 101, but still the answer is 113.5. Krishna, um, Krishna has correctly answered. The answer is 113.5 and don't forget to write in the end unit time. 113.5 unit time. 113.5 unit time. So uh, uh, millisecond, uh, better no millisecond because no time unit has been given here. Uh, you have to go with the unit time. B space, yes, Priyam, absolutely right. 113.5 unit time. So uh, until and unless uh, unit of the time is written in the question don't go for millisecond or anything microsecond maybe it will be a nanosecond whatever the hardware cpu cycle and so always go for unit time so let's see how much you have understand we are having another question on round robin and let's see if you can answer this very simple one so that you can solve this in two minutes come on do it first i need average waiting time and average turnaround time go for it and tell me the answer go for it here time quantum is four unit time here time quantum is four unit time firstly you have to draw the gantt chart if you are you have correctly draw the gantt chart you can easily solve this type of questions and i am telling you that these questions are very much important you will get in your end semester examination for sure in your sessional examination for sure and uh, at the end of this uh, unit first we will be having a class test also and there and there also uh, this question on the cpu scheduling will be there and this is for sure you are getting the full marks on this questions because this is just a simple numerical based upon addition and subtraction and division operation only right 
only three mathematical operation we are using to solve this question but the thing is what to subtract what the thing is what to add the thing is by which number you have to divide this is the reasoning you have to find out and this is the application of your knowledge that you have gained in last two weeks may i have the answer i just need to answer the average waiting time and average turn around time firstly find the average waiting time average turn around time is very easy thing find the average waiting time and give me the answer of average waiting time just only average waiting time i need turn around time to calculate turn around time this is very simple you have to go for just completion time and arrival time so you will get the answer very quickly and uh, there is some reasoning in the uh, waiting time only anyone uh, i guess only 2 to 3 persons uh, are only solving the question others are waiting for their answer and just copy and paste that yes this is the answer of mine also um, uh, if you are doing this kind of thing so this is up to you you if you want to be a like uh, you are having a bca course you want to be a software engineer so i don't think you will be in a good condition after doing these kind of thing because if you are not learning something you are just killing your time may i have the answer for average waiting time only three processes are there and the time quantum is 4 unit are you solving uh krishna mr come with 5.6 is abhishek is say uh, yes okay take your time i am giving you one more minute at least come with average waiting time take your time i am still waiting krishna very good beta 5.6 is please always uh, write your answer with unit time like uh, chitranshu also saying 5.6 is very good uh, I, we will check if it is a correct answer or not but still you have find out then go for the turn around time and always uh, mention unit time i forget to mention in the slide but uh, yes good abhishek 5.6 is unit time always write unit time okay 5.6 is 5.6 is uh, if you are done with uh, unit time then uh, of uh, average waiting time then go for turn around time very good vaibhav prakar abhishek chitanshu very good firoz is also come with the answer good are uh, you can if there if suppose 5.666 is there you can round up with the one place of decimal like 5.7 you can say 5.7 unit time and just one place after decimal you can uh, be precise in your answer simply you can say 5.7 in case 5.66 is the right answer you can say about 5.7 unit time no issue 5.6 is also acceptable but simply don't write 5.6 you can go for 5.7 okay let's see uh, here is the process and the worst time and here how to calculate and design your gantt chart firstly we are having 24 33 then after giving the four time slot we are having 20 and p2 is going to finish its execution in three worst time only and p3 is also going to finish its bus time in three, uh, under the four time unit so after that we can see here p2 and p3 has exited from the ready queue only p1 is left in the ready queue and it will get all the cpu time after that but in the chunks of 4 4 unit it will get uh, krishna is come with the answer average turn around time 17 unit time okay let's see so what we are having here we, this is the gantt chart p1 p2 p3 and then p1 will get the cpu in continuation so let's see what is the waiting time for p1 waiting time for p1 is 0 then when it get the control at 10 unit time and where where it leaves the cpu where it leaves the cpu at 4 unit time so 10 minus 4 that is 6 unit time for p1 and then for p2 p2 uh, it gives the control at 4 unit time then p3 at 7 so what is the average waiting time 10 6 plus 4 plus 7 divided by number of processes that is 3 so you can write here simply 5.7 your time 
everyone was correct 5.6 5.66 okay so let's go for round robin <coughs> turn around time what is the <coughs> turn around time for p1 p1 has finished execution at 30 unit time and when it was arrives it arrives at time 0 so the answer is 30 what about p2 p2 seven completion time arrival time 0 so the answer is 0 p3 completion time is 10 arrival time is 0 so the answer is 10 now what is the average 30 plus 7 plus 10 that is 47 divided by 3 so the answer is 15.7 i guess uh, how you calculated 17 unit time krishna what was your reasoning you have written average turn around time as 17 unit time uh, okay no issue no issue so here you can see simply turn around time that completion time minus arrival time completion time of p1 was 30 arrival time was 0 so the answer is 30 similarly for p2 7 minus 0 7 so this is how we calculate the turn around time for round robin so we are good with first come first serve cpu scheduling and then round robin cpu scheduling in next classes or uh, no issue krishna no issue in next classes we will study some more cpu scheduling algorithm and so we are done with today's class uh please uh, have some questions from the book on the fcfs and round robin scheduling and try to solve those questions.